Why use Kanban? Quite often, people mention Kanban as a step up from Scrum or as an alternative to it. It almost feels as if it was a binary choice and Scrum and Kanban were your only choices. Nothing could be further from the truth. The reality though, is that there are environments in which by using Kanban, you can simply achieve a lot of effectiveness. But what are those environments and those situations? And why would they lend themselves more appropriately to Kanban? That's what we'll talk about in this video. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Petula. I'm your host here at All Things Agile and I coach loads of teams and their leaders to gain more agility, more performance, more effectiveness. So this Kanban thing, eh? where would be the most helpful to use it and why? The first thing I can think of are highly available workloads. If your team is facing fluctuating workloads or frequently shifting priorities, Kanban is a great approach because it is a pull system. The commitment is made as late as possible in the game without compromising the actual time spent doing the work. Commitment happens as you pick the next piece of work. So let's say you would normally, by the end of your current work, pick up your next blue task as it is ordered now. But because priorities just changed between when you were doing some work and when you finished, and that is fine since they, these changes in priorities are happening in the intake part of your process, you now can take or should be taking the pink task instead. No harm, no foul. With Kanban, teams can swiftly adjust to changes, reprioritize tasks, and keep the workflow running smoothly, no matter how unpredictable things get. Another reason is the continuous delivery. For teams focusing on continuous delivery and rapid iteration, Kanban is really a good friend. By making your process have done as delivered, you are reinforcing a continuous delivery loop. The point in Kanban is always to get work to done. So while some people work prioritizing and figuring out um, what we should be working on next, the system, which is the team, the department, a whole value stream ideally, the system is focusing on letting nothing stand in the way of delivery of what is currently in progress. The commitment is to the delivery. It's not to start something new, it's to finish what's already in the pipeline. That's why you visualize everything, including the blockers and flags, you limit whip, you pay attention to the time it takes to complete the work, and you try to reduce that time to a minimum, but never skimping on quality. Process improvement focus. So the next situation to use Kanban is whenever you are in an experimentation or improvement cycle, if your team is all about continuous improvement and optimizing the workflow, Kanban will set a great foundation. Here is why. You can notice what your work is having bottlenecks or where things seem to be taking the longest to be completed. You know your average as well as your outlier times of delivery, which allows you to look into things like cost and like forecasting. All that is good data that makes you have focused conversations with the right people about the things that matter most. You improve on things that are objectively causing problems in your system. Whenever you feel that things could benefit from change, help your gut feeling by collecting some data, map your Kanban system, monitor your work flowing through your system, and then decide how to improve next. As you can imagine, any service-oriented work can benefit from Kanban, such as support, operations, sales, customer service, any request type base of work, think ticketing system approach. And that might even mean that, I don't know, maybe even a good part of healthcare could be using something like that, like the Kanban approach. I will let you be the judge of that. That is not my industry. So if you are in the health industry, I'd love to hear your insights. Leave a comment, let me know. Kanban is also successfully used in software development and DevOps, ideally when the rate of arrival of work is subject to a lot of variability or when you have variations in size as well and when priorities can change a lot. But what I truly love about Kanban is how it exposes two critical aspects that every team should pursue, customer value 
in waste reduction. We talk a lot about the first in Agile. It's, it's not a new idea. So in Kanban, when you visualize, prioritize and limit work, always protecting the flow of value through the whole system, Everybody can know exactly what's going on at any given point in time, which allows anyone to interview and manage the situation to protect value that deliverable finally gets to done. Now, we don't talk enough about reducing waste, be it by doing things differently or even by eliminating artifacts, because waste reduction calls for clear management as well. Just the same as you are measuring the process, you reveal the parts of your ways of working that are very problematic. You can improve the process, reduce or modify the steps of your Kanban system and then observe what changes. You can definitely beat unnecessary handoffs, delays, and rework. At this point, you could be asking yourself if Kanban is better than Scrum, should you be using one versus the other? And my answer would be, that's not the question you should be asking. Let me put it this way. Scrum and Kanban can be combined if you truly wish, a whole nother story we're not covering here. But the real question is, do you benefit more from a time box approach or a flow approach. Time box approaches and Scrum is one such type. They are better for research or very unknown work where you want to produce something, a proof of concept, anything, and you want to avoid the Parkinson's law. The Parkinson's law stipulates that work expands to fill up the time allotted to it. So if you give your team 10 days or 10 weeks, they will take just as long to complete their work. Scope increases, people invent things, they keep injecting stuff. You can see that you could benefit from a short time box to explore just enough in time for a particular feature. And during the time box, the team is isolated from whoever keeps asking for new shiny things. Flow-based approaches, and Kanban is one such approach, they are here to help you with sustained development, a continued healthy pace that allows for variability and change, which is, you know, once again, allowing that great agile value of welcoming change, even late in the development for the customer advantage. Now, does that mean that Scrum is dead? 